Hello, and welcome to the What's New for Inspect 2020 Build 8010. My name is Matt Hyland. I'm the general manager here at Codeware, and today I want to go through some of our high-level features for you that we put into this build for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to talk about are some of the improvements that we've made for the nozzles and the nozzle analysis for you. So the one thing you'll notice here on my uh, demo vessel is there's now a metal loss grid around this nozzle. We've added the part four general metal loss for nozzles. Now I'm not gonna go into details of how to set this up. I'll do this at a later time, but I do wanna go through the dialogue with you very quickly. So I'll just go ahead and right click on this and select my metal loss. And this would be the same how you would add, you would go to the 579 menu and select the part four general metal loss. And you'd simply select what nozzle the metal loss is located on, and that's it. You would then go to the next screen and then enter in the parameters for the nozzle as well as the parent component as well. And then from here, click OK. And that metal loss grid will get added onto the nozzle. So again, you would just simply come up to the 579 menu and select part four or five general metal loss. And instead of adding it onto a, a head or a shell, you would simply add onto the nozzle. And that's all you have to do. When we run the report, you're going to have a metal loss for the nozzle. Everything here is detailed out in a nice, professional, neat looking report for you. So you can go through all the calculations and see where the results are coming from as well. And I'll switch back here to the model. So that's been added for you. Now the next feature we added is uh, the metal loss heat map or metal loss map, if you will. And I've got this very dense inspection grid on this file here. And the data that I'm gonna show you actually came from a data crawler. So we've got thousands of points here as well. So I'm gonna right click on this metal loss and we're gonna go through the dialogue. So again, this would be the part four metal loss if it was added onto a cylinder versus what you just saw on a nozzle. So I'll click next here and I'm gonna to go to the grid like so. And the first thing you're gonna notice here is you've got all the white cells, but you also have red cells as well. So we've color coded the grid in addition to the metal loss map that I'm, I'm gonna show you. So it gives you an idea of where some of the lower points are on this metal loss. But now if you come down and click on the metal loss map button that we've added, you're going to get a nice visual representation like so of what your actual metal loss looks like when you're doing the assessment. So this also helps you verify Yes, we know there's a lot of metal loss in this particular area, or, oh, I need to go look at this a little bit more. So it gives you that nice visual cue. And this image is gonna be included for you in the output report as well uh, when it comes time to run the report. Now, one other thing that we've added in here for you is uh, very often what we see is the crawlers, when they go out, they take thousands and thousands of data points. And sometimes what happens is they miss a data point and the values come back as blank. And if you're copying and pasting this in or you're importing it in from a data or a crawler, if uh, you see a zero here, oftentimes cells don't know what to do. Well, what Inspect will do for you is if there is a value that comes back as blank, we will average the cells around that point and put that value in there and we'll warn you um, about that as well. So you don't have to get stuck going through thousands of points of data to find out what point did I miss and manually having to average them. So it'll save you a lot of time coming in from the field and getting that data into this grid. So again, we've added the part four general metal loss for nozzles as well as our metal loss map and some little features like averaging blank cells as well for you. So I'll click OK here and we can move on. So the next feature I wanna talk about is the creep assessment. So we've got our, our pipe here that we've done. Maybe it's a heater tube. We're doing a creep assessment. I'm gonna open up our creep dialog right here. Now this year, as many of you know, we've added in, we added the level one assessment type, but for build 8010, we added in the level two assessment for the creep. So within the dialog now, you have a choice of a level one or a level two. And when the level two becomes active, you can see now you have cycle counts as well as sub increments to input your data for the creep assessment. Now, in terms of the analysis methods, we've included the MPC Project Omega, the Larson Miller Minimum, the Larson Miller Average as well for you. And there'll be some other inputs, for example, your allowable creep damage. You can adjust that, ductility factors, items like that can now be adjusted. So once you get this set up, we'll click OK. I'll go ahead and run the report. 
So we have a look at what the creep summary is going to look like. It's been run. I'm going to click on my creep assessment summary. And here it is. So again, in typical Codeware fashion, we have very neat professional reports with everything detailed out for you. So you can see exactly where values are coming from and verify for yourself. So for example, the stress component calculations are all listed out here for you, as well as all the information from the inputs, your Project Omega calculations, your Larson Milling calculations, all those are going to be detailed out here for you. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to the model and we're gonna move on to the next feature, which is gonna be the fire damage. So again, we added in the level one, um, or last year. Now we have the level two assessment available for you. So I'm going to click on the fire damage dialog right here, and we're going to go through this. So we made a few changes to the fire damage dialog to accommodate for the level two assessment. So now what you're going to see is it's still relatively the same. You know, for example, your your tabs up here for your visual evidence, material properties, fuel and ignition source, supporting documents and images. That's all stayed the same. But what we've done is down below, we've listed out all of the components. And if you want to do this, you can do this for a selected component or you can do it for the entire vessel. So if you say, I want to run the entire vessel under level one or level two, you can do that. But if you want to look at specific components, you can. So for example, we'll run a level one pass or fail for you automatically on all the components. Now I set this up so the two hemi heads would fail like so. Now you as the user has an option to come over to the side and say, no, I don't want to run a level two. I want to just see what's going on with level one and select no. Or you can select yes to run a level two assessment on the selected components. From there, you just need to put in the Brunel hardness, which would then come up with a new allowable stress for you, and then your loss and future corrosion allowance. Now, one thing to note here is we also give you the option to specify a modified external pressure chart. Um, because with the Brunel hardness, we are able to come up with a new allowable stress for our internal pressure calculations. But what do we do for those vacuum calculations? So this is a SA516 grade 70 steel hemispherical head. So if it's a new construction, this would fall under a carbon steel 2 vacuum chart or CS2. You may want to say, I want to be conservative. I'm going to drop it down a chart and select CS1 and we'll run the calculations based on that vacuum chart. I'm just going to leave it as CS2. And I did the same here for our second Hemi head. Now I'll click OK. Again, I'm going to run the report really quickly. And we'll go through the report and the fire damage summary. OK, so we're here at the report. So I'm going to click on my fire damage summary here. So up at the top, we're going to see our level one assessment, uh, our pass fail column. So we obviously know that our Hemi heads are going to fail. So we're going to come down here and I just want to make note here. So the things we're going to list out here, we have our thickness, our Brunel hardness, our approximate tensile strength. But this column right here, the allowable stress, we've come up with a new allowable stress based on the rules of 579. So again, from a new design, SA516 grade 70 at these um, design parameters would be about 20,000 PSI. We've now come up with 17,143. So what we then do is we list out how we got that allowable stress for you. But now when you go to the individual reports, for example, I'm gonna come down here and click on my Hemi head, you're going to see that new allowable stress be used throughout the report. And this is where we saw uh, very commonly with customers where they would come up with user-defined materials and rerun the code calculations based on those new allowable stresses. Inspect now just does this for you automatically based on that Brunel hardness reading that you've taken in the field as well. So that's been included for you um, for this build. So again, the fire damage level one and level two are now available for you. All right, moving on to the next feature. The next thing that we added in was our part eight out of roundness. So if I come up to my 579 menu, you're gonna see parts three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and the rest are on their way. But we're gonna select the part eight out of roundness right here. And this is a level one assessment that we've added in for this build. It's a very easy dialogue, very easy inputs. We just need to know where the measurements are going to be taken. You can specify this from a datum line, from the seam of components, however you feel comfortable to get these measurements. If you know the loss or future corrosion allowance, you can enter that in. And then there's two methods for the data. You can do the D max min 
um, and you in, input your maximum diameter, and minimum diameter which, with a measured deviation, or you can do the multiple point method, which opens up a, a grid on the side here where you can come in and put in your information. Now I'm just gonna stick to my D max and min. I'm gonna click okay. And again, I'm gonna run my report and we'll have a look at the out of round this summary. So we're in the report here. I'll just click on my API 579 part eight out of round this. And here it is. So again, everything's laid out here for you. You get a really quick check whether or not it passes or fails. If it's satisfied, you can see how close is it or no, we're well within the regions of passing. I'm comfortable with this. You can move on with your next operation. But again, this is all detailed out here for you as well. I'll switch back to the model. And finally, the last big feature that I want to talk about are the pressure relief devices. We've added in PRDs for this build. To add these, what you would do is just simply come up to the nozzle menu, come down to the nozzle attachments, and you're going to notice now you've got a pressure relief device under the nozzle attachments, in addition to reducers, pipe cap, tees, uh, pipe or flange elbows, or any, uh, uh, for example, that are listed here. So I'll select my PRD, and it will attach to this nozzle. Now we do have the uh, option up here in the right hand corner to change this from a spring operated to a pilot operated to a rupture disc only or to a pressure and vacuum relief. We'll just stick to a spring operated and I'll go through the inputs with you. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this PRD and this is the PRD dialog. So again, you can change the type in this dialog as well. Um, it's up to you. And then you can change things like the starting or the angular position, what's the weight, Let's say it's 200 pounds, the set pressure, I'll just put some values in. And then if you have vacuum relief, you can set in those pressures and temperatures as well. And then you can click OK. But there is also an option to put in additional documentation. So we're going to click on the additional documentation button right here. And we can come in and we can put the report date, uh, the type, the spec sheet, and when it was completed by. Now, this is a new inspection. What we can do is click on new inspection down here in the bottom left. And you can come in here and fill out the information from the inspection record. So things like your tag number, the P and ID number, the manufacturer, uh, the test medium completed by what type, was it a bench test or field test, um, your pressures, and then your component conditions and repairs as well. So you can document all this stuff every time you go out and do a inspection on your pressure relief device, you can simply come in here and add this into inspect so that you have a digital copy of this moving forward as well. So we've added that in for you. So just to recap, we've improved some of the nozzle assessments for you. So we've added in the part four general metal loss. We've added in a metal loss map for you. We added in a method to average data. If you're missing it, say if you're bringing it in from a crawler, We've updated the creep and fire damage so that level two assessments are now included. And the part eight out of roundness and PRDs are available for you as well. Now, if you have any questions or you'd like to see a detailed demonstration, please email sales at coder.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670 and we'd be happy to discuss your needs and how Inspect would be a really good fit for your organization.